Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy. Hey, my brown brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> Back for another fine day here at Brew Strong. Uh, yes, yes. Fine day, fine day. And, and it's it's just, it's funny to me. We, we get in the studio, we uh, start getting ready for the show, and uh, what happens? Uh, <laughs> John whips out his calculator, starts going through the questions, doing some math, figure, making some calculations. I go and get myself a beer. <laughs> All's right in the world. So, is the guy with the filtered voice wrong? Uh, only one of you drinks before you think. <laughs> John's all about thinking, <laughs> right? That's well, you know, we we try to we try to um, what's delegate the various tasks. That's it. Delegate, is yeah, that like or deli distribute. Sandwich or what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you you're drinking, I'm thinking, and that's yeah. right. Yeah, I, I kind of share I the burden. It should be think before we drink. True. You know, if yeah. Choosing to drink high quality beers. That's very true. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, and you uh, are just uh, back from Italy. Trip to Italy, yeah. yeah, 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 Italy and Greece, and um, yeah, well, awesome time there. I had a had a couple of really good uh, beers from um, oh, what was the name? Of the, the Fix Brewery, F I X. I had a uh, Hellas and a uh, Dunkel. Huh. They were quite tasty. Is it named after George Fix? I don't believe so, but um, <laughs> it was. Um, Did you ask him in your <laughs> Italian, your your fluent Italian? Well, unfortunately, everybody there speaks English pretty well, so no <laughs> real worries there. Oh, okay. And, and uh, you didn't ask him if it was named after George Fix? Yeah. Well, you know they they had no idea. They were they were just humble bartenders. Oh. Yeah, uh, would, that's a shame. They said, uh, you know, would you like another? And it's like, uh, yeah, sure. In my mind, uh, I would like to believe it was named after George Fix. That would be nice, yeah. Whole yeah. brewery there in Greece. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was an awesome trip. Um, the The countryside reminded me of the Midwest, you know, Pennsylvania, Ohio, rolling green hills and so on. And... Uh, the, uh, How come every place reminds everyone of like uh, like the Midwest? Uh, <laughs> it reminds yeah. me of the Midwest. Uh, probably because probably because you know everywhere else is kind of a hellhole by comparison. So you want to kind of put a nice spin on things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. This reminds me of the Baroness out towards San Bernardino. Yeah. Kind of thing, but it just doesn't you know it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Ah, uh, yes. Speaking of rolling off the tongue. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good segue. It would have been. <laughs> uh, our fine sponsor, Blickman Engineering. Yes. Yes, they uh, roll off your tongue. Blickman, you yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Putting the lick in Blickman. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but ready to innovate your brew day. Yes, ready ready to, to lick your brew day. Uh, check them out, uh, BlickmanEngineering.com with two N's. And a CH and, and a lot of engineering behind it. Yes, yes. No, they got all sorts of great stuff. I am hoping to get, uh, maybe I shouldn't say. I know he's working on something new. Yeah, he always is. Yeah. And I'm hoping to get, the, like, the very first huh. and place that at uh, Heretic. Uh, very nice. Uh, and, a pilot uh, brewing system, perhaps? I can't say. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I can say. Okay. So whatever it is, mm-hmm. I want one. <laughs> there you go. And I want to I want to use it. 
That's a pretty safe bet. So when there you go. Talking about their stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So check it out. They've been uh, sponsoring the show since Nair on the beginning. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think if you appreciate the show, you ought to appreciate Blickman Engineering and uh, give them the hey, howdy, hey for us. He's always happy to hear from people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Always. As opposed to horses and dogs. And <laughs> right. And exactly. Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. There but. you go. That's what, that's what I was like. I was like, different people. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. That's how my mind works. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything's a joke to me. <laughs> Levity, yeah. that's what we're all about. What about your business and your marriage? It's all a joke to me. You got a kid, too, don't you? Oh, well, there you go. Uh, my children are not a joke to me. but I knew I'd find something. Yeah, I, you had to dig deep. I had to dig deep. <laughs> all right. Uh, and today we're digging deep into, uh, Q and A. We're going to, yep. you know, every, you, you guys send in these questions to, uh, Bruce Strong at the brewing com, and we get those. And every so often we go through when we try and, uh, grab a, a clump of them and, uh, centered or, loosely around a topic. Yeah. Organize them a bit. And, uh, we, we cover those, uh, off. So, uh, today we're going to do, um, measurement and yeah. uh yeah talk about measurement devices and gravity ph and why your measurement might be wrong why you know it, it's all based on questions you guys sent in uh so why don't we do this why don't we take a short break and when we come back uh we'll start in with uh, our first question on uh, measurements q a right after this When you hear Blickman Engineering, think innovation, passion, quality, and customer service. Blickman Gear is designed by brewers to give you a sense of pride in your equipment. At Blickman, they know what makes brewing a pain and build gear that makes it fun. Like the Intuitive Beer Gun, a completely different approach to filling bottles. The Therminator Wart Chiller, a new take on a plate chiller that's sized for flow, performance, and the high groundwater temps home brewers face every day. The Brewmometer, a brilliant well thermometer design with brewing parameters right on the dial. The auto sparge, ultimate simplicity for preventing an overflow or running your mash tun dry. And much more, like the modular top tier brewing stand, conical fermenters, and their boiler maker brew pots. With more cutting edge equipment coming soon, keep up with the latest from Blickman at BlickmanEngineering.com and stay on the cutting edge. All right, BN Army, it's trivia time. What's the only homebrew shop with over 1,000 recipe kits, $4.99 shipping on orders over 100 bucks, and is also home of the Wolf Shirt? The one and only answer is Austin Homebrew Supply. For over 20 years, they've specialized in creating recipes such as the best-selling Texas Blonde Ale, Apocalypso, Hot Bomb 2.0, and Double Chocolate Stout. And they just recently unveiled their small grain kits that produce one gallon of beer. Visit Austin Homebrew homebrew.com to browse their extensive catalog of equipment and ingredients. They also have many clone recipes of your favorite commercial beers. They're the exclusive retailer of Brew Vent Yeast Fuel as well, Yeast Nutrient, and the all-new Bodybuilder. Follow Austin Homebrew Supply on Google Plus to participate in video hangouts on popular brewing topics. So visit austinhomebrew.com today and make sure you sign up for their weekly email with news and specials. Austin Homebrew Supply, austinhomebrew.com. A vial of White Labs yeast is the key to your best beer. When you open a vial of White Labs yeast, you're giving your beer its best chance for a perfect fermentation. In addition to their already incredible variety of yeast, White Labs is proud to announce WLP 90, San Diego Super Yeast, now available year-round. WLP 90 is super clean, super fast fermenting with low esters and has a neutral flavor and aroma profile. It's alcohol tolerant and highly flocculent. For more of the latest White Labs news, click over to whitelabs.com where you can read reviews of yeast, learn in the lab section, and join the customer club. And if you should find yourself in San Diego, White Labs has a brand new training facility for craft brewers and home brewers alike. Whitelabs.com. Discover yeast, nutrients, enzymes, and more for commercial breweries, home brewers, and homebrew stores. White Labs. It's all in the vial. 
When I order a beer, I want my server to know more about it than I do. I want someone who enjoys good beer and loves helping others enjoy it, too. I want someone who knows how to pour a perfect pint for any beer style. I want a Cicerone. The Cicerone certification program is creating the type of people who help you enjoy great beer. Home brewers and craft beer lovers know beer is more flavorful and complex than ever, and it takes some serious knowledge to store and serve beer right. Cicerone's no beer. There are three levels in the Cicerone program. Certified Beer Server, Certified Cicerone, and Master Cicerone. Cicerones are truly the sommeliers of beer. The best beer locations have a certified Cicerone on staff. Relaxed and unpretentious, Cicerones are tested on storing and serving beer, beer styles, flavor and tasting, the brewing process and ingredients, and pairing food with beer. Learn more about your next beer guide at Cicerone.org. Certified Cicerone, because it takes top talent to present a perfect pint. Hi, I'm Jason Harris, the proud owner here at Keystone Homebrew Supply. We're thrilled to be entering our 20th year of supplying this great industry. And to show you, the Brewing Network Army, how much we appreciate your support, we're offering you 10% off your first order on our website, keystonehomebrew.com. Just use coupon code BNARMY at checkout, and I'll get your order out the same day. My goal at Keystone Homebrew Supply has always been to have a complete supply of everything a brewer could want. When you place your order online or when you come into our store, it's our goal to have everything on your list and more. One aspect of KeystoneHomebrew.com that we're really excited about is the ability to fulfill customers' exact grain bills. Do you hate to wait? Keystone Homebrew Supply can get your precious yeast and hops to you within just one day if you live between Connecticut and Virginia and within two days east of the Mississippi. KeystoneHomebrew.com I'm Jason Harris and I approve this message. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. All right. During that break, we were talking about uh, John's uh, consulting business, oh, yeah. or and then we were talking about uh, Scott's uh, artwork. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen Scott's artwork, but uh, you know, when I first met Scott, I thought, yeah, right, you're, you you can paint, sure. Yeah. And you know, I'm thinking. Romper room. Mm-hmm. The red hair kind of throws you. I, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking. I'm thinking. You know, limited, <laughs> limited uh, mental capacity. You know, finger painting or like ho- home exteriors with a crew of, of uh, Latinos. Right. Okay, right. Okay. Right. That I can see. That that I could see. Uh, but on the uh, actual, uh, uh, then you know, he, I, I saw some of his uh, hop artwork. He's got like yeah. a hop series, which I actually really like. Yeah, they're, they're, they're real nice. nice. Yeah, this are, this thing's are beautiful. I'm encouraging him to get prints made. So, you know, and, and maybe at a smaller size than right. the original canvas and then, you know, like listeners could could buy those for a reasonable price. Put them up in their in their yeah. home brewery. Yeah. Cuz I think they're sweet. I like mm-hmm. them. Oh, eight and a half by eleven. Well, it would be a first. That's what you missed. It'd, be, right. it'd be a first for me making uh, making prints. I've only ever done original, so uh, right, we'll right. maybe I'll do. You, you believe me? You're not the first, right, To right. make that suggestion. And with you know, I'm I'm not talking about doing you know insane number of them, but those would be great on shirts too. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you really what. Well. I you yeah, let's let's get the uh, let's figure out how to put on a shirt. I will uh, print up uh, you know a hundred shirts and we'll sell them out of our brewery. You will. Yeah. Okay. Is that's not, I mean, you know, your image on the line that's it's okay no, with you. I think that's great. It's more I heretical. We, I think we could sell those. Okay. Yeah. I'll Absolutely. look into it. Yeah. That's what happens when I drink while while I'm doing the shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna be like, uh so where's that shelf space? Hmm? The what? For what? <laughs> <laughs> the shirts? What? You wanna answer some questions, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Sure. How about this one from uh Jeff Eichelberger? He said, I'm a new brewer, so this might be an ignorant question, but I'm trying to learn the right way and understand my uh, personal brew house. The question is, I'm getting uh, between a 9 to 11 point higher reading with my refractometer versus my hydrometer. I've calibrated both with distilled water and get a correct reading of nothing with water. Uh, when checking the same beer with both from the same sample, however, I get a higher reading from the refractometer. Can you offer any advice? Well, for one... Uh, refractometers are not meant to measure beer because the alcohol throws off the uh, reading. But uh, assuming you mentioned, I'm assuming you mean wort instead. Um, 
Well, it could be, you know, one or both of them are actually off at, you know, are out of calibration at higher numbers. Um, you almost got to get a third instrument in there to kind of make a tiebreaker. <laughs> what do you think, Jamil? I think a third instrument's a great idea. Um, yeah, you know, the other the other thing is, uh, you know, temperatures. We were talking, uh, you know, during the break about temperatures. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, these refractometers, the hydrometers tend to have a, uh, some of them have a thermometer in them. Yeah. And you need, need need to be measuring at the at the correct temperature. If not, there's an offset for, you know, given temperature to uh, get the correct reading. Make sure you're doing that. And the same thing for a refractometer. And a lot of the refractometers, they say ATC, you know, automatic temperature <laughs> control. And what they're talking there's about no moving is... Parts. Your 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 refractometer has enough mass to it that you put a few drops of of warm liquid on them, it should cool it down to whatever that mass of that that refractometer is. Well, if you're outdoors and it's nice and sunny and warm, and yep. you you know your refractometer has come up to that temperature, when you put the drops on, it, it's not cooling down to the reading temperature. Or same thing if it's really cold outside, the, right. the temperature. That which you're using your refractometer, which doesn't tend to be a lab held at you know 20 C, uh, it's going to be off, uh, you know, just because of that. Then also, I've seen weird results. I think you know different color words and different you know uh, protein chunks and weird things can somehow you can throw it off too. Yeah, uh, yeah mess it up, mess it up a little bit. So yeah. that might be part of the issue. Yeah, and one final thing uh, is the fact that uh, nearly all refractometers that you buy, you know, off the shelf these days are actually uh, bricks refractometers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're not Plato scale, and there's right. a little conversion that escapes I me think at the moment. Northern that, Brewer actually sells one that does like specific gravity. Oh, really? Yeah, the scale on it's like you know, interesting. One point oh, you know, one yeah. oh to. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think uh, Northern Brewer is the only one that they probably get them made for them. Yeah, but yeah, degrees Plato is is a small conversion from degrees bricks, mm-hmm. and then you've got to convert that Plato to specific right. gravity and so on. So. And it's not a and it's not a linear conversion either. Right. There's there's weirdness in those tables, and yep. so you have to uh, you can't just say oh multiply by four or something like that, right. and then also. Um, uh, uh, oh, so here's here's my advice, and okay. one thing that I did a lot of times was I calibrated my refractometer in the range of what I was working with okay. uh, for wort. So I would, you know, if if you're, you know, make your average wort, measure with your hydrometer very carefully, yeah, and then good one. you know take a take a reading on your refractometer and dial the refractometer in until when in that wort, it reads the proper amount for right. that wort that you've made. Yeah. And then lock that screw down, and all the other worts that you make that are around that same general parameters, they'll read quite closely. Because yeah. really, you want the refractometer just for quick readings while you're boiling, things like that. And then you always take a, a final measure right. anyway, anyway. So uh, it doesn't matter that it can't read you know, really low. Yeah, so ch- check your adjustment screw. Make sure that uh, like a 1040, 1040 wort you know, reads 1040 on it. Right. Or, you know, whatever your average beer is. If you're doing a 1080 all the time, do a 1080 and, and uh, get that dialed in and then just go from there. This one's from uh, Chris from New York. He said, hey, fellas, can you please explain why my gravity readings were different from expected and what this really means in the end product, if anything? For a recent IPA, I had expected pre-broil gravity of 1048 and an OG of 1060 with a finishing gravity of 1013. However, however, however actual measurements turned out uh, to be pre-boil of 1060 and OG of a 1063. I checked and double-checked my instruments and all are calibrated correctly. I stirred and cooled, and this and that and took the multiple samples, even busted out old hydrometer to confirm refractometer. These are reading correct. Can you explain what this means? Why was my pre-boil gravity so much overexpected? Well, plus, it, the, he's, he was expecting to go from 1048 to 1060 in his boil. Yeah, that's pretty hefty. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit of uh, concentration. And then he went from 60 to 63. Three. Yeah, or 60, yeah, 60 to 63, which is more in line. All right, all right. 
Yeah, so yeah. why is the actual pre- and post-boil gravity differential so small, 0. 0.003, compared to differential of the expected of uh, 0.12? It didn't boil as much. Yeah. And that could be, you know, environmental, you know, humidity, things like that, the amount of vigor of the boil. But uh, I think also, I mean, the fact he was, he intended to get a, a OG of 1048. You know, that grain bill. Yeah. yeah. 26 pounds of grain for 11 gallons. That's, I mean, that if you figure 75 percent efficiency you get 1066 mm-hmm. so i think i think his his math was off for one in terms of calculating the grain bill uh, right. or as efficient i mean or, or he might be you know targeting like 50 percent yeah which would be which I, some people do yeah i i i rarely i mean even with all the brewing systems i brewed on i rarely got below 75 percent right well and I think a lot of times, it, if you do, it's crush, it's the speed of the sparge, right? It's you know messing up pH to a radical degree, right? Things like yeah. that. Yeah, you you can you can get mm-hmm. lower efficiencies, but um, yeah, I you know trying to plan on fifty percent efficiency or something like that to get down to ten forty eight from twenty six pounds of grain is pretty difficult, right? Um, so I think that may be one factor, but yeah. T- 1060 to 1063 that's that's not a i mean if if it was a, a, a one hour boil right yeah. with a high volume you know mm-hmm. say you start out 13 gallons or something like that right down to 11 yeah it's not inconceivable what right. might that mean for the uh the finished product the the 60 versus 63 well i you know he didn't include like uh his hop um schedule well you include he, he hop schedule, a little but, bit yeah but not the ibu calculations and yeah. so you know he may end up uh he less be, bitter yeah. than he planned or <laughs> you know that's fine fizzy yeah. yeah you know uh yeah it's got alcohol in it and probably tastes good so but you know we can get too wrapped up in the numbers sometimes mm-hmm. but uh, i think you know calculations were off yeah. And um you know he took more time to recirculate and to sparge and took time while he's sparging and that tends to result in a much higher gravity. Yeah. So whatever he was doing before and that's the thing, you know, brew multiple times as much as you can and get used to it and and dial these processes in so they start becoming repeatable. And then the math makes sense. If you're brewing once every six months and you don't really quite remember how it's done, all that, right, then right. then it's all over the place. You know, you need to to work at it and do it do it on a consistent basis. I'd just like to point out that uh, I am the once every six months guy, and I I beat you in that uh, <laughs> caster challenge. <laughs> all right, yeah, you keep question. playing into that. Where have you I heard that before? Yeah. Moving on to a uh, Bruce G's question. Uh, hi, Bruce Strong Crew. Uh, um, okay, these are suggestions for shows. I have two suggestions for shows. Ah, screw those. Anything that has something to do with measurement, read that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's Everybody, see. one thing per email. Not three. Not okay. ten. One. Yeah. These are not questions, Bruce G. These are show suggestions. All right. Okay. The hell with you. Let's try Mitch's question. Uh, Come on, you, Mitch. Uh, these are also uh, brewing suggest. These are suggestions for show topics. Oh, okay. Well, they want us to talk about brewing equipment, refractometers, pH meters, hydrometers. Okay. Well, we've covered those already. We we talked about hydrometers a little bit, refractometers a bit. Well, well and yeah, yeah, next, you know, how to apply the information, etc. Yeah. So here you go. Here's okay. another one. This is Nathan. Nathan from Appleton, <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> Hi, guys. I was hoping you could help me with measuring and changing mash pH. What are the best options for measuring pH? What do you guys use? And uh, what do you add to the mash to change the pH? And how do you measure the precise quantity to make the adjustments? Well, take it away, Jamil. (laughs) (laughs) I use uh, pH meters. Uh, When I was home brewing, I would use um, pH meters. But the problem with pH meters, if and again, it goes back to people brewing a lot or brewing a little. And... um, you know, pH meter, the probes are have a finite life to them. Yeah, even and, good ones, yeah. especially good ones. And, yeah. you know, you need to keep the, you need to calibrate it and you need to, uh, you know, the amount of effort for a home brewer, I just don't think it's, it's worthwhile. Um, if you're just talking about mash pH, I think, uh, you know, those 
pens, those pH pens and things like that, those are crap. You know, if mm-hmm. it doesn't have a removable probe uh, that you can replace on a regular basis, it's it's a disposable thing that doesn't work very well. So I, I mm-hmm. would avoid those. Um, you know, you're you're spending 40 to 60 bucks on those. And then... You yeah, know, like the soil pH ones thing. aren't... Yeah. They're, they're not made to be terribly uh, accurate. Right. Uh, I think you get just as good an accuracy, if not better, using pH papers. There's the, the German ones that, the that color I... fast. They color fast, and uh, you can even cut those in half, and uh, you know get two you know two uses for mm-hmm. for the price of one out of that. And then uh, people go like, oh, you know, it's you know they were having trouble. Some people were having trouble using them. I checked my results that I got off of those versus my my benchtop meter, mm-hmm. and I was always you know not always right on the money. And, you know, certainly within a tenth at worst. Yeah. And that's much better than those cheap handheld meters. Well, that's that's kind of the problem. I mean, you have such a range of instrumentation that you can use, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in, at, uh, when you're brewing. Um, and I, I, I agree with you, Jamil, that, you know, if you're a home brewer uh, brewing occasionally and you're trying to check your mash pH, make sure that you're in the ballpark, then a color fast type strip, you know, mm-hmm. test strip mm-hmm. works well. Um, the thing you have to under- remember about those strips is that they're made to be used at room temperature. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where they're calibrated at. So you need to cool your wort sample down. But it's down. like the ATC of all these other pH probes that are not necessarily. Well, yeah. I, I they're can, crap. Yeah. Well, they can be. If you don't have a separate thermometer probe, a temperature probe, and mm-hmm. a separate pH probe with true calibration, even then... There's a range that those things work in. Yeah, well, it will it will adjust the pH based off of temperature, but not, not to an extreme degree. You can't take boiling wort, and you know. Yeah, that's right. So what you do when as a home brewer, you take a tablespoon, you dip it into your mash, you get mm-hmm. some just clear liquid, you hold an ice cube on the bottom. In moments, it reaches a metal tablespoon. It yeah. reaches sixty degrees in no time at all. Then you dip your your pH strip in there, and you get your reading. Yep, that's that's what it's it is. cheap. It's accurate. It's easy. Mm-hmm. And people are like, "Well, then I have to get a tablespoon and an ice cube." I'll tell you <laughs> what. You know, calibrating your pH meter. I, I've got mm-hmm. bench meters that will auto calibrate. Given the, but you still need to rinse the probe, put it in the next solution. You need to mm-hmm. pay for the solutions. Trust me. Strips, tablespoon, ice cube. Yeah. Well, so seeing as how I'm endorsing a uh, water test kit with it includes a pH meter these oh, yeah. days, <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, I should mention that it, the pH pens, the all-in-one, uh-huh. they, they do make high-quality ones of those uh, uh-huh. that have built-in ATC with temperature compensation, um, and the junction on the probe is high-quality. Um, you're not paying forty dollars for one of these instruments, though. You're paying you know over a hundred dollars. Uh, and you're you know, you're you're getting what you're buying um now but the the problem with that though there's still i mean any ph meter you buy mm-hmm. is only going to be good for a year two three years tops even right, with good right. maintenance because mm-hmm. those junctions are are porous and because we're working in wort uh they do get they the suck up by osmosis the proteins in the wort and they eventually clog even with great good maintenance so mm-hmm. um People tend, you know, we're getting upset. It's like, oh, I, I bought this expensive pH meter, and now a year has gone by, and it's not working anymore. You got to take care of them too. You got to take gotta, care of them. You got to clean them. You got to rinse them after use. You got to mm-hmm. store them in a solution. Yeah, and you and you got to understand out. that this is an instrument that is is you know by by uh, by nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is finite. It's not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are well. The pH can... strips as well won't last forever. They have an expiration date That's on. That's right. They tend to be good past that. But you mm-hmm. know the the chemicals in there tend to degrade over time, and your sure. accuracy will fade. Uh, so those you need to use up uh, in a certain amount of time as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna. Last thing was I was gonna say if uh, if you're interested in buying a pH meter. Uh, to test your brewing, whether you're a home brewer or a professional brewer, 
uh, you need to find one that uh, measures the two decimal places. That way you know it has the accuracy to differentiate between tenths. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. as brewers, we're, we want to know, you know, within one-tenth of what the mash pH is mm-hmm. if we're trying to, you know, if we're trying to control our process mm-hmm. and, you know, make adjustments based on pH, then you need that kind of resolution. Mm-hmm. So that's another mm-hmm. feature to look for is uh, one that measures that measures the two decimal places, and then you know that single decimal place is re- reliable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Well, and, and my preference when I'm buying a meter is always um, – one that has uh, a separate probe. Yeah, replaceable probe, in other words. You can buy probes for, you know, good quality probes for, you know, 35 bucks, 35 to 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And you can replace those, you know, every so often when they wear out. Uh, when you've, you haven't taken good care of them, you can replace those and not have to replace the entire meter. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, there you go. And uh, I, I, I tell you, any pH meter, any, anytime you're measuring pH, it's good to adjust your sample down close to, you know, room temp. Room temp. So 20 20 C 68 F. Right. And, you know, if you if you don't uh if you don't do that, no matter what ATC you have, it's it's problematic. It's never never 100%, I think. Yeah. Especially if you're talking real hot liquid. Yeah. In fact, um if you know if you don't mind if I digress, I could talk about ATC for a second. Sure, go ahead, digress. Okay, here we go. Digression in progress. Um, well, you can tell I haven't had a beer this morning. Uh, ATC, automatic temperature control. Um, the ATC on these on these uh, pH meters, is de- what it's designed to do is keep the pH meter in calibration. So, you know, you start your day, you take out your pH meter, you put it in the calibration solution, hit the button, and it, you know, adjusts itself. Um your pH solutions, your cal- your buffer solutions that you're calibrating with, uh, those are designed to be most accurate at 20 C. Uh, typically, you're measuring your you're doing your calibration at room temperature or very near room temperature, and uh, so ATC. What it does is it maintains calibration of the meter when you are measuring a sample that is not at room temperature. So if you now if you want to take a Wort sample, and let's say that wort sample is only cooled down to 100, 100 degrees. Um, the the ATC in the pH meter looks at that sample and says, um, okay, it's at 100 degrees, so I know, you know, the probe knows that it needs to adjust its reading uh, based on a 75 degree or 20 C uh, calibration temperature to measure this pH accurately at 100 degrees. What it does not do is... Uh, compensate for the actual change in pH of the solution that you're measuring as a function of temperature. Mm-hmm. The ATC is only uh, adjusting the 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 probe in the in the pH meter mm-hmm. and the solution in there. It's mm-hmm. not adjusting for your your sample. Mm-hmm. So it's going to give you an accurate reading of the pH uh, at that change in temperature, that 100 degrees. But you still have to adjust yourself. Yes. This is pH at 100 degrees. Yeah. And at, you know, 60 degrees, it would be 0.2 less or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, because wort changes uh, pH, yeah. um, becomes uh, like 0.3 lower between mash temperature and mm-hmm. room temperature. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in, in other words, if you have a sample that's measuring 5.5 at room temperature, mm-hmm. if you took that same sample up to mash temperature around 150 degrees or 60 C, 65 C, uh, it would actually measure closer to 5.2. Mm-hmm. And that is a real change in pH of the wort uh, that the pH meter does not know about. It you know mm-hmm. it can't know about that. Well, it, all it says is that it's going to measure at this higher temperature mm-hmm. and give you a real reading of the pH at that temperature of that mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um if you're going to compare results with another brewer, it's either you have to, you re- always have to tell the other brewer what temperature you measured that pH at, mm-hmm. so you can make apples to apples comparisons. Otherwise, if you simply say my pH was five two, mm-hmm. and the other guy says, oh mine was five five, I wonder why they were different. Mm-hmm. Well, it could be purely to the temperatures well, that, they were measured at. That's going to bring up the question that everybody's going to ask is, so when we're talking about mash pH and you want to be, you know from you know at five four 
uh, you know, is that pH at mash temperature? Is that pH at, you know, room temperature? But in mash temperature, we're talking higher. Yeah. Um, the convention is that you talk about mash pH at room temperature. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, it says so in the ASBC method, the mm-hmm. standard laboratory method, to cool your samples down to room, te- room temperature and report them there. Uh, but even de Klerk in, you know, in uh, his book, uh, states emphatically that because pH changes with temperature, you need to uh, cool it to room temperature and cite that as your standard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that is the convention is to talk about pH measurements con- either measured at room temperature or converted by mm-hmm. equations to a room temperature co- uh, reading. Right. And what I always did was just cool it, as you say, with a right. teaspoon and there you go. ice cube. Yeah. Or I put mine in a shallow dish and kind of swirl it around. It had some mass to it. and uh, It cooled down pretty quickly. There you go. All right. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, more of your questions after this. A few things happened 30 years ago. ARPANET migrated to TCPIP, and the Internet was born. Revenge of the Jedi was renamed Return of the Jedi and opened in theaters. Mila Kunis and Emily Blunt were born, beginning a rad fantasy in my mind. But all of that pales next to the fact that Hop Tech opened its doors and began blowing homebrewers right out of their mash tuns. Hop Tech doesn't fuck around. Real people shipping awesome shit straight to you. Their new website is fast and easy to navigate. Or just call 800-379-4677 and let badass bitch Jade and Bruin brother Roberto blow their warm load of customer service all over you. So visit the site or visit at the store in Dublin, California and support those that support you. Get your brewing on at hoptech.com There's an app on the iPhone for just about everything, including beer. Apps for finding a pint of beer. Apps that look like you're drinking a pint of beer. And now, there's an app for brewing a pint of beer. Introducing BrewPal, the most all-inclusive beer brewing app for professionals and hobbyists that fits in your pocket and goes wherever you do. Recipe formulation that can be imported and exported with a customizable database. Mash and sparge calculations, yeast pitching rates, carbonation tables, and more. Available right now for less coin than a pound of grain. See BrewPal in action at brewpal.info and download it for your iPhone at a special introductory price right now. BrewPal, all the brewing software you need right in your pocket. Nico, listen, our lawyers said that we had to do this for one hour, and after this, we don't have to talk to each other for three more months at the next meeting. Kids. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm supposed to have more lines. I'm the professional. <clears throat> Hey, it's Sully. And I'm Nico. And we opened the 21st Amendment nine years ago at 563 2nd Street in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park, to make great beer and have a great time doing it. That's right, because to us, the 21st Amendment is more than just the right to make beer. It's the right to experiment, to be innovative, and just do things differently. And so now, we're putting our craft beer in cans. That's right, cans. You can find our world-famous Heller High Watermelon Wheat Beer and Brew Free or Die IPA throughout California and Alaska. And now it's also available on draft at select accounts in the Bay Area. So next time you're at your local neighborhood pub or good beer store, be sure to ask for 21st Amendment in cans. Because everyone likes it in the can. Tasty crack cans. Tasty crack cans. Downtown Joe's, where everyone is welcome, especially if you like drinking and tasting beer. Head brewer Colin Kaminsky's favorite beers are the Tantric IPA and the Double Secret Probation IPA. But you'll have loads of others to choose from when you redeem your exclusive Brewing Network savings. Downtown Joe's is the best brewery destination and the hottest night spot in Napa. Colin invites all home brewers and fans of craft beer to stop by and enjoy the great food and beer. Whether you're in the mood for riverside dining, live music, or just hanging out at the bar to meet a person of the opposite sex or a person of the same sex. 
context, Downtown Joe's has exactly what you're looking for. And now just mention the Brewing Network to receive a dollar off your beer at Downtown Joe's. That's right, take a dollar off every one of their great selection of craft beers, including the Lazy Summer Wheat, Golden Thistle Porter, and the Triple Dog Dare You. Come to Downtown Joe's and enjoy the laid-back atmosphere of Napa's best brew pub. Visit downtownjoes.com right now for current beers, the live music schedule, or to drool over their delicious menu items. Downtown Joe's, your neighborhood brew pub where everyone is welcome. Williams Brewing announces their first customer recipe issue since 1991. This free 64-page catalog includes 27 of the best home brewing recipes submitted by their regular customers. Best of all, this paper-only catalog is free for the asking. Just go to williamsbrewing.com and click on the free customer recipe issue link. This offer expires October 18th. While you are on the site, check out some of the latest exclusives like the Williams Oatmeal Stout Malt Extract, the Big Oxygen System, and they even have their own line of precision hydrometers. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse their vast selection and enjoy their famous customer service. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 4 p.m. Pacific Time weekdays ship the same day. Brewing is easy the Williams way. Like the Lance Armstrong of the beer world. Except for that nut thing. This is Bruce Strong. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're back. We're uh, talking measurements and such. Yeah. During your brew day. Nut things, nut drug things. Nut things. You know. Speaking about nut things, I'll tell you, I bet you our fine sponsor, Adam and Eve, has some nut things. Oh, yeah. In, in stock. I bet you... What kind of nut things do they have, uh, Scott? Would they have uh, like uh, uh, clamps? I'm clamps? assuming they have clamps, some sort right? of clamps, some yeah. sort of ring, right? Mm-hmm. Or separators, you know, if you need the opposite done, right? Something to squeeze them together, something to pull them right. apart. Interesting. Yeah. Something to slap them around. Yeah, maybe some sort of a, a baster. You know, I don't, I don't know what you'd be putting on there, but a, baster. a ball baster. A ball baster. Yes. Well, that sounds good. Well, and for a limited time only, you can go to adamandeve.com. And when you buy your, your nut baster, <laughs> you can get 50% off. You use the offer code Jamil, J-A-M-I-L. You're going to get 50% off that nut baster. Or, or any ball, ball baster. Ball baster. Alli- alliteration. Your ball uh-huh. baster. Yeah. Almost, almost any other item uh, that you choose. You're going to get 50% off of that. And that's all the money that you're going to spend. Because they're going to throw in uh, three free adult DVDs. And you get to choose from genres such as anal, amateur, Asian, big bears, big butts, bisexual, chunky, co fetish, gay, interactive, POV, lesbian, mills, etc. Yes. And then they're going to give you a free extra gift. It's going to be some sort of a toy lube, some some sort of a product. Keychain. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, keychain, <laughs> uh, John Palmer DVD, who knows? Coexist bumper sticker. <laughs> right. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then free shipping. So you 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 bought your your ball baster fifty percent off, and yep. then you get all this free stuff and free shipping. Just use the offer code Jamel J A M I L at AdamandEve dot com. You can even do it from your mobile phone. There Check them go. out. Fine sponsor. Lots of great products. Everything for your for your balls uh, pleasure included. All right. So what's our next question? It is from Kevin Thomas. He says, my question is regarding the proper method to read mash pH using the two most common tools available, pH strips and pH meters. I've noticed that when I take a pH reading, the reading differs from the top of the mash versus when I pour some out of the valve at the bottom of the mash. Uh, I attribute this to the mash being stratified with more dense sugar solution at the bottom than the top. So, well, first of all, is that right? It's Hmm. not wrong. (laughs) Okay. So he said, so it's then, not right either, right? <laughs> he said, where in the mash does one measure the pH, top or bottom? Uh, do you stir the mash before taking the measurement? And at yes. what time uh, into the mash do you take the reading? But does the concentration of sugars affect the dissociation of hydrogen? Uh, well, ions? it depends. It, I mean, if the mash is truly stratified, if the you know the, the grain bed is stratified, maybe mm. you've got all your specialty malts on the bottom mm. and all sure, your you know, sure. right, right, right. pale malts on top. Yeah, right. then you could... You should recirculate or stir yeah. before taking any readings anyways. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, uh, you you would hope that the the um, but it's not concentration of sugars that's actually causing that. So. Right, right. You 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 should stir. You should you you should be safe in assuming that you have a homogeneous solution that you're taking the pH of mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from the top. Um, again, depending on how he's measuring it, maybe he's seen temperature differences, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. that are influencing the difference in reading. All right. Um, okay. If if you're sparging, let's say you're fly sparging, yeah, and you're you want to check your your reading midway through the sparge, make sure you're not over extracting or something, and the right. pH is changing. Right. Well, yeah, what's coming out the bottom is going to be different than what's at the top. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I I doubt he was referring to that because I think that would occur to most people. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, some of the data I've seen from uh, some of the pH readings we were doing for the water book, um, 10 minutes into the mash is a pretty good uh, benchmark for taking a reading and seeing how it's settled out. Um, you know, you've given some, you know, 10 minutes worth of time for the grain to be wetted, for the, you know, things to diffuse and reactions to happen. So that's usually 10 to 15 minutes is when I'll take a, a mash pH reading. Well, here's how I did it when I was home brewing. I would first <clears throat> adjust my water, get it to the strike temperature. Yeah. And I'd, I'd have all my water in my mash tun, and I would check the pH of that. Okay. Yeah. And that, and I eventually I knew <clears throat> that my with a given water for a given grain bill, and I could kind of extrapolate in my mind, go, oh, this is all more pale malt. Oh, this has got a lot of dark malt. You know mm-hmm. which which side of the fence it would lay, okay. but it would give me like a general idea of where I'd be, and then I'd dough in all my grains and I'd stir it as I was tossing in the grains as mm-hmm. I was taught. Yeah, so I get a nice uh, mix on the mash. And once it's all settled in there, I would then take another reading, and it was you know fairly mixed, and uh, you know I'd see how that went, and then I'd start recirculating. Uh, as soon as I got it in there, I'd start recirculating the mash. As a rims, herms kind yeah, of system, right? right. To, to kind of uh, uh, clear up the wort and to, to get, you know, maintain a consistent temperature all the way throughout. And once that was going for a few minutes, I'd take another reading mm-hmm. and uh, uh, tended to be, you know, fairly, fairly accurate and fairly Same. consistent. So, okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, that's essentially how you do it. Uh, again, Cooling the sample, uh, you should look for a reading somewhere around 5.5, five, 5.2 five, to 5.6 at room temperature. But if it's up at 5.8, that's not a huge problem. It depends on your grist, depends on your water. There's a lot of factors that affect mash pH. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no magic number as far as what the mash pH should be for a particular recipe. You have to kind of dial that in yourself. You know, beer is going to happen. It becomes a question of fine tuning that recipe, you know, and tasting the resulting beer and saying to yourself, okay, do I want to increase my mash pH a little bit or decrease my mash pH a little bit mm-hmm. uh, to try to, you know, improve fermentability or, you know, improve flavor, improve flavor expression. Um, there's no, there's no magic answer. You need, you kind of need to measure, you need to taste and, and use your judgment. So did we answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Did you, you guys talked about uh, whether you take it from the top or the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Here is <laughs> Zach Evans. He said, I've listened to all four of the shows about adjusting your water. My question is, how do you measure your PPM of your different factors in your water after you add chalk, salts, etc.? Is there a uh, test kit to buy? Well, this is, this is interesting. Um, yes, I am... I am now endorsing the uh, Brew Lab Water Analysis Test Kit from Lamont Company. Um, it's a real nice little kit. Comes in a handy dandy uh, blue uh, carrier, but it tests all six factors. You know the minerals that you need to test for your water: the calcium, magnesium, total I think, alkalinity. I think I should get a free sample. Yeah, and I will. I will try it, and I will uh, give you my. 
my endorsement or my uh, crushing blow. There you go. Okay. Product. I think I think you ought to I think you ought to send Uh-oh. send one my way. I'll, I will I do I so. I will try it on yeah. our brewing water down at Heretic. Yeah, but it, it's a nice nice kit where you you know you're, it, within five minutes you can test the six factors you need to decide what the residual alkalinity of your water is. I uh, you calculate that. Um, there is a Brew Lab Plus kit that carries a pH meter, real nice pH meter. Um, in addition to the other six factors, so um, how much does the the kit with the six factors go for? Um, manufacturers rats. recommended. I believe sales it's price. like I believe it's one hundred and twenty dollars, one hundred twenty five, uh-huh, something like uh-huh. that. And with the pH meter, uh, then it's like one ninety mm-hmm, or two hundred mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. But um, it is it's a it's a high quality pH meter. Um, mm-hmm. two decimal places, ATC. Um, storage and memory. And, and so what on. about and how many tests do I get in that kit? Ah, I'm, good question. I'm, uh, you get the, the simple kit. You, you get a, at least fifty tests for each parameter mm-hmm. in the kit at a hundred and a hundred and twenty something like that. So you're about about two dollars a test, two, two bucks a test. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Versus say sending a water sample out to Ward Labs or something like that. Mm-hmm. Where it you know cost you twenty or thirty to get right. that done. Yeah, it's like eighteen, but then shipping. Yeah, um, it's not bad. No, Mm-mm. and you know the you, you you trust the results, but mm-hmm. you know if, if you want to check it more than once, it's uh, you know yeah, it, it's nice be, that you have shelf you know, life on the product. Um, shelf life is a year or three easy. I mean, mm-hmm, these mm-hmm. the chemicals don't degrade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, but uh, you know, it's nice to have that capability at hand. You know, measure it now, right. measure it later. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I suggest people measure their water yeah. you know, during the winter. Yep, when it's raining well, mm-hmm. and measure it during the summer when it's dry as heck. Yeah, because um, your your water supply changes during that time. Right, you know, municipal water supply and stuff. Yeah, like that, so they may pull from you know groundwater part of the year and and surface water or rivers the other half of the year. Right. They may change, you know, halfway through the spring or something, depending. So, yeah, it's always good to to understand where the source of your brewing water and when I it may think change. Every homebrew club ought to lay in, a, you know, oh, yeah. a couple of these kits, a, a yeah. kit or a couple of these kits, and then you know, share it around with the homebrewers. And because, you know, you might want to check your water, you know, a few times. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, if everybody, you know, you, you know, ten people in a club get together. They can each check their water five times. Yeah, before you run out. That's right. Sounds you know. And, yeah, because you really can't. You can't go about adjusting your water if you don't know where you are. You're in it. You know, ten, twelve bucks. Yeah, that's right. Sounds like a smoking deal. Mm-hmm. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, we'll wrap up with uh, any remaining questions right after this. And now, Northern Brewer presents: What if homebrewers ruled the world? Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll follow me, I will lead you into the gallery area. Now, the first piece up for sale today is a Jamil Zena Chef original, a bottle of 1997 vintage Evil Twin. Oh, I see. A bidding for this one-of-a-kind piece will start at £7,000. And if you'll continue to follow me, ladies and gentlemen, I can show you a rather abstract piece from Bay Area brewer Justin Crossley. It's a German doppelbach entitled Justin's Giant Bach. The brewer's notes here indicate that this beer had excellent mouth food. Capital, capital. That's just a crazy dream. Or is it? With Northern Brewer, a thirsty nation can craft its own ale and water for the greater good of mankind. Northern Brewer, the home of superior customer service and the finest selection of home brewing goods for the future. Hi, I'm Jamel Zanishef, and in addition to my work on the Brewing Network, I write the style profile column in every issue of Brew Your Own magazine. Hi, I'm Sean Paxton, and when I'm not prepping for the home brewed chef on the Brewing Network, you can find me writing articles on how to cook with your home brew for Brew Your Own magazine. Greetings, cretins. This is John Palmer, and when I'm not writing for Brew Your Own, I'm reading it. 
John Palmer, Sean Paxton, Jamil Zanishev. If you love listening to them on the Brewing Network, you'll love reading their articles, tips, and recipes in the pages of Brew Your Own magazine. Join Jamil, John, and Sean eight times a year in Brew Your Own. And when you subscribe to BYO on the Brewing Network website, half of your subscription price goes right back to the BN to support great beer and food programming. So sign up for Brew Your Own magazine through the BN website today so you can listen and read your way to better homebrew. That's it. I've had it. I am never putting hops in my beer again. What? Why? It's just too ridiculous. Insane prices, stupid contracts, high shipping costs, crappy selection. Dude, you need Nico Brew. Nico Brew will rock your f***ing face right the f*** off your f***ing skull. Five dollars shipping to all 50 states. Plus fantastic international rates get you low prices on Nico Brew's great selection of hops and more. Whether you're a home brewer, a pro brewer, or a home brew shop owner, Nico Brew can get you the hops you need in increments big and small, single orders, spot buys, or full contracts. And there's only one place to join the Uber Special Secret Elite. Elite Bare Bones Club, where you'll get the best deals anywhere. Holy f***ing shit! NicoBrew.com. N-I-K-O-B-R-E-W. Nico Brew, your bare bones buddy in the brewing business. Hey, Wooly, I'm beat. Can we find a nice tree to just hang out in for a while? You're beat? I've been swinging through this forest for 50 years, ever since we... Ever since we first escaped from the circus. I know, I know, but there's got to be more to life than exploring this creek and trying to populate the valley by copulating with loose, hairy girls. Mark, we stop. Look! What is that? It looks like a man-made treehouse. With fresh food. And craft beer. Welcome to the Creek Monkey Tap House, boys. Grab a seat. Creek Monkeys drink free. <laughs> awesome! The Creek Monkey Tap House in Martinez, California, takes their mission of fresh food and beer seriously. They only serve locally raised beef and chicken, as well as local sustainable produce. It's better for you and the planet, and it just tastes better. The beer and wine at Creek Monkey Tap House are chosen with the same care for the highest quality and roast. Rotate frequently to make each visit an adventure. Swing on in to the Creek Monkey Tap House and enjoy a new legend of amazing food, beer, and wine. The Creek Monkey Tap House, online at creekmonkey.com. Hey, my brewing brothers and sisters, this is Jamel Zanisha, and I love a bold, hoppy beer, one that spits resin in your face and makes you cry, Uncle. There are a lot of great hoppy beers out there, but at Heretic, we want to make something as bold, dank, and resiny as possible. We use hops at every chance we get, including multiple dry hop additions. The result is Heretic Evil Cousin. This light golden, 8% Imperial IPA has an easy malt character that helps take the edge off the massive bittering, but it takes a back seat to the in-your-face hop character. We make sure this beer finishes dry so the hops can jump out and slam me in the taste buds. If you can't get enough hoppy goodness, Evil Cousin is your cup of tea. Cheers. Back to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right, we talked about measuring the size of your junk during the break, and we also, uh, you know, from what point to what point do you measure? And we also right. talked about the traffic in LA. Uh, and how horrible that was! Ah, amazing, how, yeah. amazing how they go hand in hand like that. Right. Well, I I do have things to entertain myself during my drive uh, in L.A. and uh, you know, uh, you do what you got to do in order to uh, you know. Yeah. If you're driving by me, you just avert look, your look eyes for the little flappy bird. Yeah. Just, just look at flappy bird. <laughs> I once hit a hawk driving down the freeway in los angeles isn't that a federal offense aren't they endangered or something it, it, you're in a concrete canyon first off i mean the walls yeah. are like 40 feet high on this section i was in <laughs> and this hawk just like flies straight into my windshield i'm wow. like oh my god <laughs> giant cloud of blood i'm just like wow you know freaking like red tail hawk <laughs> i felt so bad what did, you, like, did you know immediately what it was i could see it coming straight at me i'm like wow. oh my god it must have scared the hell out of you it was huge yeah i'm like a slam 
Hey, kids were in the car. I'm just like, uh, uh, turn the windshield wiper on. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm freaking. Yeah. And Liz is like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. The kids will freak out. Don't say anything. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was something else. Weren't they like, what was that? Did, it, didn't it scare them? I don't know how they were like, you know, watching a movie or listening to the radio oh. or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, boom. It's like, oh, my God. I felt so bad. But. You know, you can't change lanes. You can't, like, you know, right. evasive maneuvers in L.A. <laughs> You're going 80 miles an hour. You know, sick. it's, it's like the freaking NASCAR. You are, you know, four inches away from all the uh, every side of your car, and you're going 80 miles an hour. Hmm. <laughs> the, the, the lane, they've, they've taken three lanes and made six out of them. So your car just <laughs> barely squeezes into those lanes. Yeah. And then... You know, so you don't have a choice. You cannot do evasive maneuvers. You just take whatever comes to you, and you try not to hit the cars around you. Yeah. So, you know, poor Hawk, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. You You've go. been thinking you could have turned on your uh, windshield sprayer first and kind of lubricated it for him. But <laughs> so he, he slid <laughs> off. off. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> wasn't, wasn't quite quite enough time for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Options are limited, yes. I thought his, his blood uh, would provide enough lube from the slide <laughs> off the top of the car. There you go. All right. Uh, questions from the chat. Uh, yeah, this is from uh, Eric from Toronto. Uh, he said, has Jamil hit any other birds of prey? No. <laughs> He said, uh, is there a way to measure the amount of yeast? I have. <laughs> you have no yeah. way. I've had so many goddamn birds. I don't know what the hell it is. Birds of prey. Well, well yeah, I've had a few. A but few? There, there's, there's, been, there's been a lot of other birds. I, I, what is it about me and my driving that, <laughs> that I'm ta- taking out so well, it's, many it's, birds? It's probably the rabbits on the front grill of your car, that, you know, <laughs> right, attracting them. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Eric asks, uh, is there a way to measure the amount of yeast cells in a slurry in a mason jar if we know the volume of sediment uh, without using a microscope? Uh, he said, can we assume one and a half to two billion cells per milliliter uh, for American yeast like 001 and three to three and a half for German lager yeast? Yeah, just kind of how fast you can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's tricky just to assume on a sediment that you have... Uh, a certain concentration because uh you know it depends on on how much troop is in there it depends on you know how long it's been settling it depends on you know a, a lot of different factors so what you can actually do is um you can shake that up and then you know you if you've got a known volume in that jar whatever that that liquid is you can shake that up uh, and, and it's important to be able to tell what, what volume that is. And so you shake it up so it's, it's homogeneous. And then, uh, you take that and you, you, you put a, a measured amount into, uh, like a test tube with distilled water. You shake that up. Um, and you, you base it off a, of whether it looks cloudy when it's just barely cloudy enough. That is, you know, like a million cells per mil or something like that. I, I can't remember what the number is. But you just dilute it again. And based off of that, you can you can get a pretty good idea of what the concentration is in that, that solution. So uh, what you do is you go buy yourself a book called Yeast. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> and uh, and uh one of the things I found when doing research for that book was a, a method of determining yeast concentrations with nothing other than a test tube and some some uh, clear water. So uh, it's in there, and, and essentially you just, you know, you got to do a little bit of math, but you don't need any other equipment other than that. A test tube is pretty, pretty cheap. So there you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Another fine show. Thank you. I think uh, we should all be thanking uh, Blickman Engineering for paying yeah. for the show because that way you don't. Nobody have else is willing to pay for it. Yeah. That's how it goes. All right, and uh, if you're if you're listening to this and you enjoy it, uh, make sure you check out the Brain Network store, brainnetwork.com slash store. Lots of goodies in there. You can get that yeast book I just talked that's about. Right. That's yeah. that's available there. John Palmer's How to Brew is there. This water book is there. I got some and, of those. Yeah, uh, lots of great stuff in there. Lots of goodies, uh, hats, <laughs> shirts, T-shirts, growlers, yeah. things. That you might want to wear, use, insert, etc. 
And new shirts are coming out all the time, too. So right. even if you think you've seen them all. You I'm have. looking for a Hoff and a bathtub shirt coming out uh, yeah. soon. Gift for your wife? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that would work for her, but well, you never know. Um, uh, maybe Make go to Adam and Eve's find a gift for the wife. I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe. And then uh, if you're listening live, stay tuned. We're going to do another Q&A, and it's going to be about uh, starters. Uh, people Eat have starters, questions yeah. about starters all the time. So yep. get a big, thick stack of them, and we're going to try and get through at least most of them. Here we go. All right. Till then, Bruce Strong, everybody. Bruce Strong.